So a couple of facts, I guess, that the uh, luxury industry in terms of uh, rental uh, growth is certainly growing uh, faster than most other sectors. In London, we saw Bond Street prime rents go up by 43% this year, already from a, a relatively high number. Uh, New York, still uh, incredible demand. Slightly different in uh, Asia and the sort of Far East, we see Hong Kong with uh, some retailers deciding to um, reduce the number of stores they have. Uh, some um, rental areas declining by around 20, 30%. So it's a mixed bag, um, but we certainly see in the prime cities, so London, Milan, uh, New York, etc. Uh, rent still performing very, very well. And the challenge for retailers is finding the right location, basically. For a luxury brand especially, um, it, can be, it can be particularly interesting to not only have a good location, but have the best location in a certain market to demonstrate and underline their uh, attractiveness, their, their leadership position. And um, from this perspective, once you already have a couple of stores, or at least one in a certain city, you can afford to wait. To wait, see, and actively pursue a strategy that will allow you to then, when an opportunity comes up, be quick uh, in closing in on a deal and then uh, acquiring the right spot. We have areas popping up around the country that luxury and aspirational brands are looking at now that I would have thought years ago they probably never would have looked at. Wynwood in Miami has become a very hot, edgy, cool place to go. Um, the West Fulton Street District in Chicago is another one where, uh, you know, where, where um, brands are finding a home today and, uh, and aligning themselves in that sort of live, work, play mentality. So Google opened up a headquarters. WeWork has positioned themselves in the marketplace. And then McDonald's moved their headquarters there. Not a luxury brand, obviously, but 6,000 people coming into the market will make a difference. Um, so I, I think the answer to the question is, yeah, uh, you're not going to see maybe Gucci or Louis Vuitton going far afield, but there are other brands that I think will take a look outside of the normal marketplace. Um, everyone sort of noticed that uh, luxury experiences are growing faster than sales of personal luxury goods. And Sam, just back to you, I wanted to see if you could talk about which new formats or formats on the horizon hold the most potential to captivate this changing consumer in search of experiences. And how do you serve those customers if internally you're not able to provide them with the information they need on that customer or able to provide them with the information they need to actually service? So I'll give you an example of uh, Berluti. So Berluti is a customer that we have from, it's an LVMH uh, brand, and what they do with Salesforce is they use our solutions to power uh, the sales people to help them better service. So when a customer comes in and is ordering a new pair of shoes, they're able to see in real time um, the materials, the pricing, the, uh, the time needed to actually produce, and so they can give an answer to the customer at that very moment without having to say, L let me give you a call back you know, two months on the road. Um, so it's really about empowering the salespeople in order to give that best experience. Because very often we think about digital as being an application and letting the customer play with his phone. But sometimes it's also about empowering the salespeople and empowering your back office so that you can provide that 150% experience. Uh, turning now to digital tools and innovation, Andrew, if I could start with you. I mean, formats and retailers are fixed to some extent, but how, so how can retailers overcome the limitations of their formats via savvy marketing and communication? Um, I know that's a big topic for you. If you could share maybe some best practices. The millennials are very much pushing back against a requirement for service. So we released a big millennial study yesterday at CBRE. You should have a read of it. It's very interesting. But it talks a lot about um, millennials want authenticity, they want interaction, they want engagement and knowledge, but don't necessarily want the very, um, the very sort of fawning levels of service. They're sort of, oh, please, sir, please, madam, step this way. They don't need that anymore. They know more about the products than most sales associates. So I think for, for retailers to use technology, but not as a, not as a gimmick, as an enabler, I think nothing more frustrating than going into a store to try and buy something and the sort of technology or the experience gets in the way. So the experience is great, um, but actually it needs to help the shopping journey. So whether that's uh, the likes of Burberry having sales associates 
that have iPads on their hands that can serve you around a store. Whether it's Apple, where you can buy the product from a sales associate, you don't need to go to the till. Uh, whether it's the communication from a retailer on Snapchat or Instagram or Pinterest that talks to you about the brand and the brand qualities. But I think the whole experience innovation needs to be part of the whole shopping mission. Well, um, we still have some brands that are fighting against the digital world, let's put it that way. Although I think that maybe in 15 or 20 years, there won't be any. Well, that's my opinion. Um, I actually know of one, but sorry, I won't share it with you, that will soon open their e-commerce because they understood that um, it's very important also to um, manage to find your place in the digi digital world. Uh, brands like Chanel or Hermes, for instance, they want to stay exclusive and they know that they don't need these extra sales uh, at this stage um, to um, become substantial. They already are. And some of the brand strategies, I think, is to become substantial and to be there a hundred years from now. And that's why maybe they're, a bit, they're not yet um, came to the digital world. They, um, I remember I used to work for Netaporte just before my uh, current experience. And I remember uh, when we were invited to fashion shows, we were at the very back and almost on our tiptoes to look at the clothes and two years later on the front uh, row to, you know. So I guess it takes time for every brand to understand the, the magic of the digital world and they will come to it anyway, I believe. So technology is able to uh, provide you with the tools to help personalize exactly the way you talk to Mr. Smith in the way you talk to uh, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones. Uh, and I think that's where uh, technology becomes really interesting is, yes, the store experience, but it's also about the conversation that you can personalize and have with your individual customers according to the way they want to have it. So startups, you know, I mean, the list is, I don't even know. You know, it's so huge because there's so much innovation. But what's really important is keeping in mind that one-to-one, that, -one, uh, that capacity to have one-to-one -one conversations the way that your customer wants, not the way you want. I, I think everything we've been talking about today is part of the whole. But at the end of the day, if you do it well, you're going to have profitable stores. And if you don't, you're not. Gucci just reported a 10.5% increase. I think a lot of that is the way they're communicating with the younger generation through the, the, the use of digital. Um, but there are retailers out there. Uh, you have a $100 million Sephora store in Champs-Élysées. You have a $600 million Apple store in New York City. These stores are printing money, paying enormous rents. It, a lot of it has to do with just how well you are relating to that consumer. The consumer is ready to spend money. There's no question about it. There's a lot of money out there. So it's just the, be the way you present yourself, uh, both digitally, in the environment itself, the store environment itself, and then of course you have to have great product. Uh, I mean, uh, we could talk about each indiv individual store on Madison Avenue or on Fifth Avenue, and at the end of the day, you know, 80% of them are probably making money, 20% of them are going to say that they're using it for marketing. But um, the 20% that are using it for marketing are doing it just because they haven't figured out how to get that consumer to really uh, embrace their brand thoroughly.